As we've mentioned, nucleotides are grouped into threes called codons, and each codon codes for a specific amino acid. So here's an mRNA chart that shows you all the different mRNA codons and their corresponding amino acids. There are also DNA charts that do pretty much the same thing. So you read the chart row header, column header, and then find the specific codon sequence. So here's an example. If you had the codon AUG, you read row header A, column header U, and then find the um, AUG within this box. So AUG codes for the amino acid methionine, and this is actually our well-known start codon. So we also said there are stop codons. So for example, if you had the codon sequence UAA, again you read row header U, column header A, and then within this box you can find UAA, which codes for your stop. So remember we said that start and stop codons will begin and end the polypeptide synthesis process. So that means within every mRNA sequence, um, it always starts with a stop start codon and then ends with a stop codon. And if you notice, there are actually multiple codons that code for a stop, three of them, UAA, UAG, and UGA. And if you look around, you'll find that there are more um, amino acids that are coded for by multiple codon sequences. So in other words, multiple codons can code for the same amino acid. But never can one codon code for multiple amino acids. Were the latter to happen, a codon sequence would be ambiguous, and the wrong amino acid in a polypeptide sequence can do severe damage, as we've learned before. If you think about it, this code is really incredible. Other than a few exceptions, this can be called the universal code because it pretty much is the same in all organisms. And it only uses four different nucleotide bases to code for all 24 different amino acids. So there's actually a mathematical reasoning behind grouping the nucleotides into threes. If they stood on their own, they would only be able to code for four different amino acids. Whereas, if they were grouped into pairs, you could do the math and find out they would only be able to code for 16 different amino acids. Once you group them into threes, you find that you have 64 different um, codon combinations and 64 different options that cover the 24 different amino acids. Genius, right?